primary ignition. Welcome to Unlimited Power. My name is Dirod, and here's my Twilight of the Republic pre-release guide for Wat Tambor. Wat Tambor is a um, separatist official that we've seen. He's a, the leader of the Techno Union, and I'm really excited that he got put into this third set of Star Wars Unlimited. Now, if this is one of your first time watching one of my guides, I always want to focus on a lot of commons and uncommons found within this set, because when you do a pre-release or a sealed event, you're only gonna have six booster packs to work with. That means your rares and legendaries are gonna be pretty slim. So we wanna focus on cards that can really work with your leader's abilities and give you a strong foundation no matter uh, what colors you're left with. So these are gonna be cards that I think are, are great. Um, there are definitely gonna be some that I'm, I won't mention that are, are good, um, but it's just because we're trying to, trying to keep this short and sweet. And hopefully the things we talk about help you identify those cards that I'm um, not mentioning. So when we're looking at Wat Tambor, let's take a look at him first as a leader. As an action, you can exhaust him, uh, which means you can only do this once per phase. And it says, if a friendly unit was defeated this phase, give a unit plus two plus two for the phase. Okay. So once a turn, you have to have a unit die. You are gonna lose an action or use an action and you're gonna give some, make someone else stronger. This means you're gonna be playing uh, this deck a little bit slower than your opponents because you need to do something um, for to have one of your units die. And then you wanna attack with a unit that just got this bonus. If you're not attacking with the unit, you're not getting enough value, right? You're plus two, plus two, make it work for you. So it may take a couple of turns until you have Watt Tambor online. Now, as an epic action, if you control five or more resources, you can deploy Watt to the field. This means you can do this as early as turn four. When he's deployed, he's a three, six, and on attack, if a friendly unit was defeated this phase, you may give another unit plus two, plus two for this phase. Okay, so he still sticks with only giving one unit plus two, plus two. The conditions are the same, except now he the trigger is when he attacks. Again, slows you down a little bit in sealed play, so, Let's start taking a look at some of the cards within his leadership aspect that will work with Watt. First card we're gonna look, look at is going to be the Droid Commando. A three cost unit that is a four three that says as long as you control another Separatist unit, this gains ambush. Let me set up the scenario so you can understand how to use Watt efficiently here. Let's say turn one, you play a regular battle droid. Doesn't matter what it is. We'll say Confederate Courier. Let's say you played Confederate Courier, since it's a two drop on turn one. On turn two, you play Droid Commando. Your opponent has a unit in play. You have a Separatist unit in play. Um, you now have the ambush mechanic. You swing with the Droid Commando into them, and you essentially do some damage there. If your Droid Commando did die, you can now give the Confederate Courier plus two, plus two for the turn. Then you attack with Confederate Courier for four damage instead, right? There's value in playing a lot of these ambush cards like Droid Commando because it may result in you losing a unit, but hurting your opponent's unit before they can attack you, hopefully getting them off the board and strengthening another unit you have in play. Doing this uh, across different arenas may also help you avoid that unit dying quicker that you just put the bonus on. Either way, strengthening its health, strengthening its uh, power is a really good ability. It's just slow with Watt Tambor. Next, Confederate Courier, we just talked about it. It is a two-cost unit, but when it dies, you get a Battle Droid token. And trying to keep units in play that you can either use the exploit mechanic on, which we'll talk about here in a minute, or just that ones that can just swing into your opponent's units to trigger Watt Tambor's ability of plus two, plus two, plus two, um, is gonna be very helpful. Having a death trigger kind of rewards you when you know you need your units dying. Next is the Kraken, a five cost ground unit that is says when played, you create two battle droid tokens and on attack, give each friendly token unit plus one plus one for the vase. The Separatist droid is a two five. It coming in with two battle droid tokens again, helps you have units that you know you're okay uh, losing um, in order to trigger Watt Tambor's ability. 
Now, Command has a lot of great cards in it. Here are three more I want to highlight. The Coruscant Guard, we've talked about why Ambush is important, and at two cost, as long as you have two other units in play, you can get the Coordinate keyword online. Coordinate is one of the new mechanics in this set that says, as long as you control three or more units, you get the ability uh, along with whatever Coordinate tells you you're getting. In this instance, the Coruscant Guard gets Ambush. Subjugating Starfighter is another ambush card we've talked about, but when played, if you have initiative, it creates a battle droid token. It's a four cost three three, so chances of it dying are pretty high in order to trigger Watt Tambor's ability. And last is the Bactoid Spider Droid, a card that has exploit that says when you play it, you can defeat up to X units you control. The card costs two less for each unit defeated this way. Whatever the value after exploit is, is the X value. So if it says exploit two, this means you can defeat up to two of your units, helping you trigger different things of Wat Tambor or other abilities. This allows you to play the Bactoid Spider Droid for four resources, and it has ambush. Ambush is going to be great um, in this format, especially at this stat line of five, six. If you ambush your opponent's uh, battle droid, that's four damage going over their head. Love it. In the Vigilance aspect, the Droidica Security has Exploit 2 and is a 6 cost 4 5 with Sentinel. The Sentinel is going to buy you some time and keep a lot of your units in play just to have a little bit more control of the game. Exploit's going to allow you to lose units when you need them to, so you can get out the Sentinel unit quicker. Death by Droids is a 5 cost event that allows you to defeat a unit that costs 3 or less and gives you 2 more battle droids to use with Wat Tambor's ability. And calculating Magna Guard, one of the Grievous Bodyguards. I wish they, they, they automatically gave these Sentinel, but they did not. They are a 3-4 and says when played and when a friendly unit is defeated, it gains Sentinel for the phase. So using Wat Tambor, you're going to have friendly units being defeated. Um, and so this Sentinel may be very conditional when you, when you need it to be. In the aggression aspect, let's look at the um, 00M series officer. It's a two cost unit that's a two one that says when defeated, deal two damage to a base. You have no problem letting your units die. So um, to trigger other abilities. And this one is gonna reward you for doing that by dealing damage to the opponent's base. Self-destruct's another great one. Defeat a friendly unit. And if you do, deal four damage to another unit. Lose one of your battle droids in order to deal four damage to an opponent. Um, I think that's fair. I think it's a good at the cost. It does what you need it to do. Um, and hopefully your your droid token generation is in a good spot where you feel like you can afford to lose the unit. Last is the B1 attack platform for the aggression aspect. A three cost unit that is a 5-2. Now this common hits hard, but that two health is it can be really difficult when your opponent has clone troopers that also hit for two so be mindful of this yes your opponent's going to want to swing into it allowing you to trigger wat tambor but if they don't you do get to hit for five which is uh pretty pretty awesome and the cunning aspect one of the big rares i want to look at here is sand hill a six cost three seven with exploit three exploit three when you cost six means you can pay zero for this unit and on attack, Sand Hill says, for each friendly unit that was defeated this phase, ready a friendly resource. So, yes, you can defeat units and give a bonus with Wat Tambor to play Sand Hill. And then next turn, if any units were already defeated, you now get to ready resources, which I think is, is pretty great. So Sand Hill's definitely a rare to look out for. The other non-rares that are that you should have in your deck are going to be on the doorstep, which is a four cost event that creates three battle droids and readies them for you. So you know that you can get value out of those tokens immediately. Hidden Sharpshooter is going to be a card with Ambush. It's a four three Republic clone trooper and Ambush again is what's going to be helpful with Wat Tambor. In the villain aspect, I'm going to recommend Merciless Contest, choosing a non-leader unit you control to defeat another player's unit, no matter, you know, as long as it's non-leader, it's dead. Great. Droid deployment. Two costs, create two droid tokens. Love it. Battle droid legion. Exploit two, nine cost, six, five unit that says when it dies, it creates three battle droid tokens. This card is great if you're paying five for it. 
it's not so great if you're paying seven. So it's better to lose two units to give yourself a six five that says when it dies, you get two more tokens. There, there's real value there. And lastly, the non-aspect cards. Headhunter Squadron just kind of fits because it's a one cost space vehicle, sorry, two cost space vehicle that's a one four that you can just get on the board. The Volunteer Soldier is gonna be a two cost unit because you're probably, you should have trooper units in play in this uh, sealed format. So you'll be able to pay two for a unit that can essentially be a three three when it attacks thanks to that raid ability. And last is private manufacturing. A card I'm excited to try in this um, constructed and limited private manufacturing costs two for you to draw two cards. If you do not control a token unit in play, you do have to put two cards from your hand on the board of your deck, I'm oh, sorry, on the bottom of your deck in any order. Uh, more than likely you should have a trooper, or sorry, a token unit in play. Uh, it will be a tro trooper token. But either way, I like paying two for two, even if I'm just cycling cards out of my hand. Those are the cards I really uh, suggest people look at <clears throat> when they are looking to play Wat Tambor. Again, his ability does require you to lose some type of unit, so another unit can um, get strength in that turn. So you wanna make sure you have two units in play at all times. Let me know what rares or legendaries that you, you uh, pulled to work with Wat Tambor at your local event. How did it go for you? What color? I'm curious. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be playing Watt in my sealed event or not, but we'll see what happens. I wish you luck if you're attending a local pre-release starting this weekend, or if you're just uh, waiting for a release so you can open products. Thanks again for watching. Good luck at your future events, and may the force be with you.